on the second row but couldn't get his way through into turn one. Banyai then. Riding on a racetrack has to be, to be very honest with you, a fairly recent dream of mine. Because since childhood, riding a bike all by myself was all that I dreamt of. Riding on the track is what I believe only racers do. And I know, I wasn't the only one. So that was always an aspiration, but never something that I was hopeful of getting to do, in this lifetime at least. Only when I grew up to realize that you can learn track riding, or even racing for that matter, is when I felt there's a slight possibility of something like this happening. And after creating content around motorcycles, this little possibility felt achievable. There was just one reason, one trigger needed to get it all started. And sooner than I realized, here we are. As one would imagine, I was all nervous and anxious before getting on the track, right from what the bike will feel like, what the track will feel like, how will the leather suit fit me, the gear, and no, I do not own this leather suit. There are suits available at the track that you can use, which is, of course, mandatory. So here I was, wearing an almost disintegrated but usable enough riding suit and boots fastened with duct tape, shitting my pants in anxiety of how to ride but posing as if I've just won the first podium at the Indian GP. As they say, Fate the Fate, but Nawa bhi na gate. While this is a story about the actualization of a personal goal, it was possible because of this beautiful new bomb of a machine, the Aprilia RS457. And I'm sure you must have heard a lot about this bike already. So let's just breeze through it, shall we? Music. 457cc liquid-cooled parallel to an engine that produces 48 PS of power and 43 Newton meters of peak torque. Mated with a six-speed gearbox along with a quick shifter. Looks resembling its bigger sister, the RS660 and even the RS V4 to an extent. Gives it that proper big bike feel. Loaded with tech, incredible handling chassis, relatively comfortable riding ergonomics, preload adjustable suspension, with an extremely compact and lightweight build of 175kg wet. All of this coming at a price tag of 4,10,000x showroom. Given the brand and the Italian legacy that it comes with, there's no better place that it had to be ridden than a full-blown racetrack. Now, riding on the racetrack for the first time, I knew I'm not at all going to feel at home. It was, for sure, going to be a strange experience. So many things that will be new, so many mistakes down the line, and hopes of learning new things along the way and eventually coming out as a slightly better rider. But you know, life throws such strange miracles at you once in a while. When you try something new, something profound, but before you try it, there's this nervousness, this anxiety of how you'll do it. While there are your peers that are experienced and that's making you even less confident as to how well you will do in comparison. And then to your surprise, right from the get-go, you do so well, even better than others around you that have done this before. And in your first attempt, you outperform them, as if you were born with this talent, but never knew about it because you never tried. And you leave everyone in utter shock. Yeah, that, <laughs> that, that did not happen. <laughs> Alright, my strategy for the day is to stay as behind as possible because I don't want to uh, guys you need, generally need to understand that I'm feeling really noob right now so I'm, I'm thinking I'll just stay behind everyone so that I'm not holding up anyone else behind me and I can ride at my own pace I'm right riding for the first time on a track god damn it <laughs> alright the first lap I'm just gonna look at these people okay these are f***ing professionals dude I'm just gonna imitate the lines that these guys are carrying Okay, braking slightly sooner than I did right now. Okay, my throttle is not consistent. But I'll fix that in the next lap. And I'm taking a higher gear than I should have. There, okay, this is 
Okay, my lines are pretty f***ed up, dude. Wow, man. I feel like a noob. A noob would be a heavy understatement as to what I was at the track. My lines were all over the place. I was braking wrong, entering the corner wrong, running the wrong gear. But for all the benefit of doubt I can give myself, and first times have to be humbling and real. But boy, was I excited like a little child. Man, it really feels good! I've not been this excited for a long, long time. And the motorcycle did its absolute best to take up all the mistakes of this child and didn't let it affect or ruin the ride on the track. Taking all the wrong lines, no problem. Trail breaking late into the corner, no problem. Running a higher gear than you should, absolutely no problem. As potent as the engine and the chassis is, it is equally friendly and forgiving, letting me do all kinds of foolishness as a beginner on the track. The twin spa aluminum frame, along with the supremely light build of 178 kgs, is easily flickable around the corners. Couple that with the stiffer preload adjustable suspension, both at the front and the back, ensures rock solid stability. The TVS ProTalk tyres come in handy too and offer impressive grip, inspiring confidence all along. The suspension, however, naturally has a sporty tune and being a veteran rider in the potholes of Mumbai, while riding over a patch on the track, I did notice the undulations clearly, which I believe will translate to a slightly stiffer ride in day-to-day -day usage. Slightly stiffer is the keyword here. And well, this is meant to be a track machine that is practical enough to take you to places. The less aggressive riding ergonomics justify the day-to-day -day usage too. So one can't, or rather shouldn't, complain. With such handling dynamics, not having a good enough engine would have been criminal. But this Aprilia doesn't disappoint even a bit. The parallel to an engine runs a 270 degree crank that gives it that distinct asymmetric growl at idle and eventually screams by the end of the rev band at 9000 rpm, which is not a super high revving engine compared to the Kawasaki's, but it does pack a punch. You do have some noticeable vibrations at the top, but there's nothing bothersome. The engine is so tractable and friendly that you quickly understand the power delivery, even in the most powerful sports mode. As I said, it lets you make your mistakes and doesn't punish you for them. What I did not like about this bike and I'm sure you must have heard it already, were the brakes. All through the riding on the track, since it was my first time, I always kept wondering, how was I braking so late before I entered the corner? I blame my lack of experience or even skill for that matter. There's the mistake. Don't late brake, man. Ah, damn, I brake too late, man. I still haven't figured out the exact point. But when I heard everyone complaining about the brakes, is when I realized, it's not me, it's you. Now there are a lot of reasons, observations and explanations on the internet as to why these brakes aren't as good as the bike's performance. Be it the organic brake pads that fade away quickly, or be it the brake fluid heating up, or various other reasons which I'm honestly not that technically sound to explain. However, a quick fix could be getting centered or semi-metallic brake pads that last longer or getting higher grade brake fluid that could sustain higher temperatures. Having said that, a racetrack is the kind of a place where everything intensifies. While this is not to justify the flaw, but to judge everything from a real-life perspective also needs to be taken into consideration. What impressed me both on and off the track was the stability and build quality of the RS457. Despite being the cheapest Aprilia and coming out of India, the quality seems to be quite promising. Although comparing it to the global standards would be quite futile, as there are very obvious compromises made to keep the cost in check, like the simple metal rod for the side stand. There is attention to detail, but not something like the Triumph Soffer for even lesser the cost. But as you can see, I am nitpicking at this point. The performance, road presence, character and ride experience this motorcycle offers at this price, while being very easy to tame and control, is absolutely commendable. While being friendly to the noobs on the track like me, when one gives it the beans, 
it has incredible potential to give you more than your skills reach i myself experienced this first hand when i was giving it everything that i had on the track and yet being comfortable and not scared of the power the bike had but on the other hand there were these professional riders that were a lot lot faster than me times been moving slowly so we are ready in to deep gracefully carving out corners like knife through butter and pulling away sooner than i could even register on the very same bike goes to show the amazing potential the motorcycle has for all levels and kinds of riders i witnessed the other experienced riders riding the way they did and while i learned a lot of new things i also ended up unlearning quite a lot breaking before you even begin turning in elbows bent co engaged look as ahead as you can and so much more of muscle relearning but i also realized that it's all about endurance as to how far and how long you can be at your best performance with a normal ride on the roads you have your micro sessions of high speed riding when the surroundings allow you and then you come back to riding slowly but on the track when it's just fast and peak riding you are at the fastest you could possibly go and how long you can sustain that is what the actual sport is all about it all comes down to skill endurance and focus and it's super duper tiring your place is like i do 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 my place like you do while it sounds hardcore it's also a beautiful dance you perform with your motorcycle where it's the motorcycle that rides hard and fast with all the power that it has with you controlling the throttle of course and it takes you to a corner for you to take hold of it Use your skill and command to control and give the control back to the motorcycle for it to ride ahead hard and fast out of the corner. It's just magical and so rewarding when you finally get the hang of it. I dreamt of doing it, but genuinely never thought I would actually do. And when I did, I realized there was a whole world out there waiting for me to discover. It's so weird that in normal life on the road there's traffic lanes oncoming vehicles pedestrians a random dog and everything else and you still manage to go fast enough it's as if you're trained to ride on a chaotic road like that but when you're on the track every possible distraction in the world vanishes and all that is made a priority is to make you go as fast as you possibly could and then it's just you and your skills There's nothing else to it. Just ride fast. And there are so many nuances to it. The line you take, the corner you enter, the angle you lean at, the gear you're in, how you brake, when you brake, how long you brake, when you exit the corner, how do you accelerate, how you shift. Everything severely optimized and choreographed to just make you go fast. So here was I, absolutely clueless as to what more I could do. to go further faster and better and it was so exciting to not know so many things that you can potentially learn knowing that you would love learning it was like watching the first episode of a web series that gets you hooked and then you notice that it has 6 seasons with 10 episodes each this excitement of not knowing something that you know you're going to love is the best feeling ever and the best part was since there were absolutely no distractions on the track All I had to focus on were these little nuances of riding in the best possible way. And I could notice myself getting better with every lap and instantly pick the mistakes that I made along the way. Okay, I'm getting better at it. Had it been on the road, all of these nuances would have gone unnoticed. I gave my absolute best on the track that day. Of course, keeping my safety and skill in check. Yeah, that was better. Even then, within a few laps of all riders riding together, everyone pulled ahead and gradually disappeared not just that the first rider to lead the pack was so fast that he came all the way around and overtook me and that ladies and gentlemen is called getting lapped i've officially been lapped guys but but but, but. you know why i wasn't demotivated by getting lapped forget getting demotivated i was in fact thrilled because the time that the first rider took and the distance that he covered to eventually lap me was a scope i had to learn on that track on that bike on that day 
And mind you, that was just another motor journalist that may have done a number of track days in his life. Imagine what a professional racer can do on the same track on the same bike. There's so much more potential to uncover and achieve. And that's as exciting and inspiring as it can get. Despite being surrounded by experienced riders, I know for a fact that no one on the track that day was as excited and exhilarated to be on the track as I was. And that was just the best feeling in the world. What an amazing start to the year. These opportunities that I'm getting are because of my YouTube channel, my YouTube audience, and the growth it has led to. Had I been a normal person, and by normal person I mean my life before YouTube with a normal job, I would have never experienced what I've experienced in the last two years, even in the next five years. These events and experiences are happening so fast that sometimes I find it difficult to contemplate and cope up with the pace of life. And I'm not at all complaining. But the fact that I'm documenting all of this to eventually turn back and watch some fine day in the future to relive the nostalgia of my very first moments on the track is going to be something else. And I know for a fact that the bug has bit me. This was my very first day on the track, but nowhere close to being the last one by miles. I'm going to promise myself that I'll learn track riding. As much as it costs, I will invest in this skill and hopefully get a lot better down the line. And I'm in absolutely no hurry. Neither am I going to rush to achieve this. This is the birth of a dream. And I'm going to let life take its time present me with opportunities and savor the journey as I go. And I'm so thrilled to see what's in store for me ahead. Again, what an amazing start to the year. Thank you for watching.